Good morning, everybody. I want to talk about food and food stuff. The definition, our, our current definition of food and food stuff, and all the paradigms that are built around our definition of food and food stuff, and then ask the question, is it time to, uh, to redefine food and therefore uh, the paradigms dependent on the definition of food? While I do this, I'm going to walk around and uh, show you some, uh, some cool things growing in a garden. This is comfrey. I got some seeds, <clears throat> I started some plants in pots and then I, I put them out here and this is a second year. Now they, uh, I took some roots out, cut the roots up in pieces and put the roots all over. Now I have comfrey all over. This is bee balm and then this here, big patch here is stinging nettle and I have patches like this growing everywhere. <laughs> And they just keep coming back, and I and I could chop them up. I, I cut them all. I cut all this down, and uh, <clears throat> it just keeps growing back and back and back. So <clears throat> I think this is not like uh, far fetched to say that right now, in 2018, where we stand worldwide, the uh, the situation about food and sustainability and the number of people on the planet is um, is getting quite alarming um, and people are rightly asking do we have enough food to feed everyone and is our current farming methods sufficient and what what can we do about it and so Look at all this nettle. Now, uh, nettle, by the way, has is one of the is one of the plants that has the most vitamin K. It has like 300% daily value. Vitamin K is uh, the that is that vitamin that they um, is helps for the clotting, and so all sorts of like. What well, has to do with the blood, you know? Also, it has vitamin A, and you'll see how all this is. Go what I'm saying here is going to tie, uh, is going to uh, all tie together uh, once I'm done. Let's continue. Um, so, the um, the current paradigms clearly are of of agriculture are struggling, like the, like the big ag. Is struggling it's you know the uh, the f quote food that they're growing this highly highly hybridized genetics and now with the genetically modified seeds and that require all these pesticides and and fertilizers and you know because the hybridized plants were growing like uh, like the corn we're growing, you know, is has nothing to do with the the, or, the original wild type version of corn. This here is a uh, I got two of them on growing here, and they're like um, like the belladonna type of uh, plants. They have this uh, scopolamine and uh, atropine which is a very uh, toxic if you don't know what you're doing but it's a it's a medicine if you know what you're doing okay uh, and this I talked about already it's the uh, hairy cluster vine okay it's got LSA as for as an alkaloid different types of uh, ergo clavines and ergotines and and so on so it's another medicine and the leaves are also very nutritious it's wild this is wild. the leaves are very nutritious and also used for uh, 
different uh, med medical purposes like uh, eye eye problems, you know, eye sores, and it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, works on the mind, you know, mood, anxiety, and things like that. This here is um, wild amaranth. I've made videos amaranth about amaranth. The leaves are very, very nutritious, but the seeds, the seeds, this one is tiny because like I mowed here not so long ago. These things get really tall. Um, the seeds of this here are like superfood, okay? People who know about amaranth, like they know. But if you don't, like Google it, you know. Um, and the amaranth, uh, people call it pigweed, and there's actually a war here in the United States from the USDA, uh, which is a, uh, a shill front for the big uh, corporations that are pushing the uh, this, um, what I call now faulty par agricultural paradigm uh, that includes a definition of food. You know, it's a very restricted, narrow-minded definition of food that is actually causing a lot of problem problems um, feeding people but is making them butt loads of money and the people like at DuPont or and other places that are making the pesticides and and then Monsanto Bear who are making and controlling the seed the genetics the, they're making money and people people are suffering around the world and um, and I'll keep going and talk about that but just finish this here the seeds they contain um, a lot of protein and this I is is I think is very close to being a complete uh, protein. The current like, definition of food and food stuff is very very narrow-minded. Okay, we've been forced down this. Um, I mean, it's when, when you're born, your parents feed you things, and you go to the supermarket, and you see and you learn pretty quickly what food is, and it's not. There's not a lot of uh, variability. Okay, like. And uh, one one could even, if you look at this in, in biodiversity, it is not very biodiverse. It is a handful, you know, or two handfuls of uh, of different things that people eat, and that's it. They will only eat that for the rest of their lives, and and every culture might might slightly differ on on that, but by and large, it's all the same. People eat only a certain amount of things and then that's it and no one questions um, that the word the definition of food see it's like food is food it's in a su supermarket and that's it and then when people um, start to uh, garden or grow food or, or go into agriculture well they just grow what they could sell at the market okay now like I said, a lot of these species, uh, these vegetables that we're growing, and, and it's same with the with, with the cows and the pigs. It's not very di diversified as far as the genetics go, and we have moved away from whatever the original stock was of the wild boar, the pig, or even the cows. You this know? is a um, and senna obstifolia, and it grows in Africa and everywhere along. Along the uh, the roads here in the in the southern USA, it's a weed, but um, it's highly nutritious. And I'm going to make another video. These leaves here, you could ferment them. You know, you make them, you pound them, you make a mush, the bit of salt, and you put this in a pot and you let it ferment uh, without oxygen for a few uh, a few weeks. And whatever you get out of here is is packed with like uh, amino acids and proteins and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, there's a lot of research in the universities in, in Africa that have uh, quantified like the protein and uh, the types of amino acid and um, all the alkaloids in here. In India and in China it's a, it's a herbal medicine it for the liver and anyways I don't want to get too much in here. So is this plant here Siddha Acuta you could eat the leaves, and but it's also medicine. Uh, works on the mood, anxiety, depression, things like that. Also, very highly, highly <clears throat> good antibacterial, antifungal, uh, antiviral, whatever that means. But this here can replace a lot of the antibiotics. So back okay, to the definition like, of food. Uh, 
when um, when I started do gardening, I um, I was trying to grow the uh, the different types of uh, food <laughs> that we were accustomed to eating, and a lot of it failed. And because I wasn't um, putting enough nutrients in the in the ground, quote cow manure, pig manure, chicken manure, or uh, um, the uh, synthetic, you know. And I didn't want to do that. I I, I did not want to like uh, put all this stuff in the garden because um, I've I know I. I know a lot about about the uh, different types of, of gardening practices and I was trying to create something different here which I called sacred agriculture which I I know is not the right definition because uh, I've grown into something different and uh, any, and so anyways I I realized quickly that uh, the garden was teaching me things because I wasn't trying to dominate and all these weeds, quote, that were taking over were telling me something. And they were telling me that um, to open my mind up and to, um, to try to learn and see what they were. And it turns out a lot of these weeds that I now garden, okay, I, I, I harvest the seeds and I am gardening those weeds that I used to fight. And so... There's no need. Like, see, this this hairy cluster vine was one was my nightmare before. Now it's like I grow it. The same with this here. I I wait, can't wait to have the seed pods. I'm going to spread it everywhere. Um, Sida acuta. I've already done this. I've already selected the seeds. I put the seeds in this bed. They're here. These these are these weeds are growing here because I'm quote gardening them. <laughs> so. So then this, uh, my, my quote, sacred gardening opened my mind up, okay? Like it, it expanded my consciousness and it, it forced me to redefine food. And because of that, um, there is, there, I had to, I had to, to formulate a different way of, of gardening. And, and if you look at what I'm doing here, it is completely unrelated to, uh, organic agriculture, uh, biodynamic agriculture, permaculture, um, restorative agriculture. The closest thing uh, it, it's related to is um, this Japanese man who, did, who uh, came up with natural uh, gardening. Um, but it's still like, um, it, I think uh, it still has to do with rice and, and gardening. Uh, some of the known food stuff under the classical definition, right? Now, one might argue, but we have evolved, and um, all of the hybridization that has been done has been beneficial to man. It has it has permitted us to grow larger uh, fruits and vegetables and in bigger quantities to feed more people. And while that might have been true at a certain time, now I think um, we've we've crossed a threshold where this is 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 now there's like there's some feedbacks that they you know have kicked our ass where we're not actually feeding all these people and um, and the soils are no longer fertile enough to support these uh, hybridized monster plants. And even the the fruits and vegetables are now lacking in 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 the um, vitamins and minerals. Right? They're big, they're huge, but they don't really feed us properly anymore. Look at this. These here is um, Loki in India, uh, Kakuzi in the. Italy and everywhere else in Africa it grows there they have their own name for it uh, this thing here grows these gourds oh my gosh I, I mean, uh, <laughs> let's see can I back up and uh, I look at look how big this is big bigger than my arm this is like my leg okay and these things here I did not even um, plant the 
I put seeds uh, two years ago, a year and a, a year ago, I think, a year and a half ago, and they made these here, and I let them. Oh, I, I stepped on some ants. This is the thing. There's these ants here, um, fire ants. They're not very friendly, but I understand why. We're not very friendly with them either. <laughs> And they and this here has just been growing and coming back and this kukuzi in India is using Ayurvedic medicine um, for uh, uh, Diabetes to help uh, regulate the blood uh, Sugar content, okay, um, so yeah, so this gardening has forced me into read for myself redefining what food is and starting to understand that a lot of the quote weeds that we are fighting putting herbicides are drought resistant they um they don't require fertilizer cow manure anything and if and now you see that we have modern science that are analyzing the nutritive contents of these wild edibles we're finding that they are packed with with all with minerals and vitamins and 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 some proteins and so I think we've I think we're at a place where we've moved from taking wild plants hybridizing them zapping them with UV rays crossbreeding them you know like creating new types of plants like uh, like kale and all this stuff that comes from a wild mustard um, and 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 only to reach a point where these these species, these highly hybridized, genetically altered species, are requiring more and more and more pampering, and and so it's just become it's becoming highly complex. And what I'm saying here is maybe we need to redefine food. Maybe we need to say to ourselves, well, this was good, it was fun, it was an interesting ride. There are certain things we could keep from this, but by and large, let's let's go back to the drawing board. Instead of keep plowing forward with the science and the engineering, trying to fix what is broken, okay? trying to, do, to, to genetically alter even more something highly, highly hybridized that can't withstand drought, uh, trying to like insert a gene inside of that that will withstand the drought. No, there are some other wild type alternative, uh, wild, wild edibles alternatives that have as much protein, maybe even more minerals and vitamins that don't require genetic modification. They just require changing our mindset. Now this is not going to happen be from government because government like USDA are completely bought and paid for by the big industry, okay, big, big corporations. And big corporations are not going to let this go. And so it has to stem from the the roots, the grass roots <laughs> upward. It has to be a bottom up approach, which means people all over have to start to uh, redefine, just have to start like they have to put their brains on and start to to think about what it what food is for themselves. And then people who are gardening have to say, well, maybe I uh, maybe I'm fighting hard trying to grow certain things and there is no reason for that. Maybe I need to Where's go what? back to the drawing board. Anyways, not saying like I want to throw the baby away with the bathwater. I'm just saying I'm just saying it's time to to think about the definition. This is ginger. I'm growing like uh, quite a lot of ginger this year and uh, ginger is really, really, really yummy. I, I, I really like ginger a lot. So you can see some it. people are like that are more and more starting to, to, to get that there's a problem are moving towards things like permaculture, which is, is more like including the landscape, the different, like having trees and shrubs and trying to work with all of these species together in in a matrix you know that recognizes the benefit of of shade for certain 
uh, plants, maybe some plants grow better with other trees and this and that and the other. But when you look at uh, when you look at what people in permaculture um, are promoting, they're still promoting like you know you grow the corn, the hybridized corn, the um, uh, green peppers and this and that and the other and yeah of course they're going to talk about some perennials like what I'm showing you here Jerusalem artichokes but the paradigm itself is still linked to the um, the agricultural the definition the the current definition of food stuff oh, and the same with with biodynamic agriculture they're still trying to grow the food that people will want to buy in the market and they still have to deal with the same problems you know the watering the fertilizing see in biodynamics they're all about the the cow the cow manure and composting the cow manure with these special esoteric preparations that um, require killing deer and um, to to get the deer bladder and then stuff the deer bladder with certain plants and then um, compost the uh, the plants and the deer guts and then put that in the compost and spray that on your field with all the cow manure and so it's not it's not very sustainable because there's not enough this is a uh, turmeric and so there would never be enough cows and certainly there's not enough deer that we could slaughter to have the bladders in order to produce the compost and the sprays and um, you need skulls too you need animal skulls you need cow uh, mesentery cow guts you know like in biodynamic agriculture there's a lot of slaughtering of animals in order to produce the quote medicine that is quote healing the, the the earth nature does not need us slaughtering deer to heal you just need to stop if you have a garden stop stop going to your garden for five years and come back nature will have healed itself okay like tilling the ground every year putting all this uh, all this biodynamic stuff and cow manure does not heal the soil it helps you grow uh, plants that have been hybridized to the point that they can't grow by themselves <laughs> and it's sustaining that that same paradigm that I'm questioning and I'm saying I think it's time to get rid of it or at least transition from it to something else okay um, so biodynamic organic um, all these permaculture are just different ways to trying to to grow food without all the synthetic chemicals but they're all the same paradigm basically okay and uh, organic right now is so corrupt it's not even funny I mean they just there's like a hundred different types of, of sprays uh, herbicides pesticides fungicides uh, synthetics uh, in there, synthetic uh, fertilizers um, uh, organic does not mean organic anymore. It's been corrupted. It's just Whew. everything out. But we need to be able to rethink the definition of food. And if we do that, we will realize that there's a lot of food out there that is highly nutritious and highly also uh, medicinal. And then we won't, we won't require all of these... Uh, all of this GMO stuff going on and we won't require all of this these uh, fertilizers and all this water and this and that and and uh, there won't be these people starving everywhere and um, but it's go we're gonna have to transition okay because right now you, we can't say let's shut down the current system there's too many people that have that are dependent on on GMO rice, GMO corn, and all this stuff, right? It's like it's it's been years, decades of, of setting this up. So, but if we if gardeners out there, okay, people who are gardening and people who have small farms, slowly start to redefine for themselves the definition of food stuff, and they learn about. Um, the perennials and everything that is f maybe start with heirloom and then start to learn about the wild edibles maybe um, these people can start to bring this to market 
or at least they could feed their own family and maybe there's just more people need to be teaching people about how how to grow wild edibles i'm, I'm questioning if it's time for a, a, an overhaul not like just saying hey like we're gonna go from from uh, organ uh, from industrial type of uh, big ag growing to permaculture or big ag to corrupted USDA organic but yeah um, so I don't know everything but this sacred agriculture which is more like a, um, a spiritual practice has opened my mind up that what my in original intentions were were off and nature is telling me look there's there's a lot of food a lot Even of things and so i'm kind of like remembering um maybe what our ancestors knew before we started to like mess around with the genetics okay it's like it's all coming back to me and i'm 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 pushing it out okay i'm like just like this transistor this conductor i'm it's coming to me and i'm pushing it back out just like push and i might not be doing it uh using the right vocabulary um but i have to deal with this with what with what i see and what's in front of me that is that that has like decades of of propaganda that has like uh, been put into the minds of people the the last thing that I want to say is I'm also I'm also remembering that food and medicine are are one and a lot of the the wild type of foods out there are also medicine and so it's about dosage how much do you eat of this wild plant how much do you eat of this wild seed this root this that and so there's a whole learning process also that has to come out of this where we uh, we learn how to uh, how to cook these things and and in what we amount have, what has happened is we have broken down put food on one side and medicine on one side and we have perverted what we call food on this side and we have perverted what we call medicine on this side and both of them are not healing both of them are are pushing us down the canal of getting sicker and sicker and sicker and also uh and also we have uh costing us more and more and more in order to grow and produce and so all of this here all of this here needs needs to be to transition towards something that is much more sustainable spiritually uh, intellectually emotionally and physically right so that's it folks take care and i'll i'll get, make more videos as i have more information to share all right bye bye